and welcome back. And uh, we're shifting things around this morning and uh, we're actually going to start our show off with our interview with ABC anchor Candice Gibson. Now Candice is a, of course Belizean born. Uh, he lived in Belize until he was about 10 years old and then he migrated to the United States uh, where eventually uh, he moved into journalism and he's worked with several major stations and uh, uh, actually is an Emmy Award winning journalist. He's received uh, three Emmys, one uh, individual award, another for a sports feature that he's done and also uh, one as a part of the Good Morning America team which they just won last year. And with all his accomplishments, of course, uh, and recently being named co-anchor for one of the morning shows at, at ABC, uh, he has decided to take a very quick break. In fact, I think I believe he's back on air again this morning to visit home along with his mom and uh, be able to document the journey. He took the time when he came in to stop into our studios and he sat down to have a conversation with me about his journey, about what it means to come home, and definitely uh, just understanding a bit about how hard he worked to be able to get where he is at this point. So that's what we're going to see at this time. Welcome back. Of course, uh, we are about to start a very special interview uh, at this time where we have visiting with us and we've been mani we've managed to get a bit of his time uh, <laughs> during his visit. Of course, award winning journalist Candice uh, Gibson, who's with me this morning to be able to talk about why he's in Belize, his history with Belize and uh, all the great things that you do. Good morning. Good morning. Why not be in Belize is actually the key question, I guess. I know. Or, 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 would it be? Um, yeah. It's great to be here. Thank you for having me. Yeah, you get to sit on the other end at this point in time. It's kind of weird. I got into the airport and there were, I, I walked out and there were cameras all around. You mm -hmm. know, as a black man, when there are cameras all around and you're walking out as an American, mm -hmm. you feel as if you should have handcuffs on you. <laughs> <laughs> so did, you it, did you take a moment to turn around it, and see? Yeah, I'm like, wait, <laughs> there's got to be some dance hall person here. <laughs> Shaggy. Nope. Uh, no. It was you. Yeah. So it, it was, was it was a very surreal moment. It was very cool, like yeah. homecoming moment. Yeah. Oh. I, and I have to say, uh, we're also in the presence of something else great, right in the middle of the uh, table, which we, we took as a part of our decor. Uh, <sighs> one of your three Emmy Awards. And uh, we got to say congratulations <laughs> Thank you. to you. Thank you. You know. Um, so this is one that I'm very proud of. I won it for um, outstanding reporting, individual reporting in Philadelphia some years ago, and I also won a sports Emmy. And mm -hmm. then recently, uh, Good Morning America won an Emmy for outstanding morning TV program, mm -hmm. of which I had like 0.2% to do with. Mm -hmm. <laughs> very little to do with, but I'll take it. Yeah. Um, I don't normally travel with that. I'm shooting something for our morning show at ABC, yeah. um, World News Now in America this morning, and um, this is part of the uh, the bit. Okay. Or the, 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 so, so the, we're doing the, the story so the, of Candace's homecoming. That's in what's essence, happening. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. You haven't been home for 11 years. Yeah. You have to tell me a bit of what it feels like uh, preparing for the trip, yeah. knowing it's going to be documented and also shared with all your viewers back home. Um, so it's funny to hear it as home because, yeah. you know, I guess at the end of the day, that is what it is. As soon as we got to the airport, everybody kept saying, oh, welcome home, welcome home, welcome mm -hmm. home. And it's been so long. Yeah. I'm like, why haven't I been home? Um, it was a trip that came about a year ago or so um, where I told my mother that um, we would come. She usually makes a, a pilgrimage to Belize every, every year for yeah. <laughs> about a month. Mm -hmm. um, and... We said that we would come next year. Next year crept up on me very quickly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and it also came in between what's called uh, ratings month or sweeps for us yes. when we're not allowed any sort of time off. Okay. Um, because it's... Too way, busy. Yeah, but it's also when we're hoping to try to get drive viewers to our TV shows. Yeah. Um, and so uh, I, I said, well, this is the only time. It's, it's, it's May. I, I can only do a couple of days. And so... They were able to give me the time off and mm -hmm. um, came about the, the, the trip. But in planning it, it's been this chaotic, because it's only like 48 hours, so it's been this fun, chaotic thing of just like, okay, if 
we're going to be here, I want to, uh, I can only spend an hour here, and then I got to be here and here and here and here just to try to make the most of it. And I've never been to San Pedro, so we're going to go to San Pedro as well. And you have to be jealous hearing all these people talk about Belize as this top oh, yeah. tourist destination. All, this, all these celebrities. And you haven't been back for 11 years. Yeah, so, thanks. Wait, uh, yeah. I hope you make the most of the 48 hours, and I won't take up too much of it. Oh, no, but please. Let's, let's take the we can time. hang out for the whole 48. <laughs> <laughs> let's take the time to look a bit at your own history with Belize. Uh -huh. You know, we celebrate Belizeans and their accomplishments, grow, uh, whether they grew up here uh, or whether they live abroad. And we have quite a number of mm. Belizeans who are very Or whether their, their adopted grandmother is from here, but ah. still we claim her as a Belizean. That's right. I'm just saying. Just some shade on Simone Biles. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Don't worry. She still loves us. <laughs> <laughs> she does, which is good. That's all that matters. Yeah. So um, you lived in Belize until you were 10 years old. Talk about yeah. your history with, with the country. I mean, I... I I grew up um, on like Far West Street uh, That's right. in an alley, and um, one of the, my earliest memories was falling out of a window as a toddler. <laughs> <laughs> and mom laughs. <laughs>, laughs. My mom's in the, the room, and um, my parents couldn't quite find me. They just heard screams and then looked out the window and saw my eyes, my bright white eyes in this in this this muck of dirt and trash, and I hope that that's all it was mm -hmm. <laughs> and not anything else. Um, so that's the Far West Street memory. And then we moved to what's called the back with like the Santa Barbara area. Yeah. Um, and that, I remember that area, that time of my childhood a little bit more. It's just, yeah. you know, that's when I learned to ride a bike, um, did my, my schooling at Wesley and um, had to go to piano lessons and such. Mm -hmm. and. Um, you know, that's, that's where the, the core of what I am today started. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, all Belizeans want to know uh, how your Creole is at this point, right? How my career is? Yeah, your Creole. My Creole. Well, Jesus. Mm. Um, my Creole. It's such an embarrassment. Um, and you I, the, can say... I did it. I did it. I did it on TV the other day. Uh-huh. Um, because I forget what we had, but there was something that we're... we're uh, they were like, oh, you, how's, how's your patwa? Uh -huh. you know, um, how's your Creole? And I'm like, that way to talk about And I just, the way I was just talk like, about like, oh man, that's so embarrassing. That's it. I don't know. It, okay. it, maybe, maybe by, um, by, you know, the end of the 48 hours, my Creole. Well, my challenge will be that okay. in your clothes for your, uh, piece that you will do on your homecoming, that I'll you will do, close do, in Creole. I'll do it in Creole. Yeah. What do I say in that Creole? What well, can I say? It depends on how you plan closing. Okay, so we, we'd say like you're watching World News Now. So in Creole, that watch, would be... You had to watch World News Now. Okay, you had to watch World... <laughs> we'll work on it. We'll take the time off camera to work on it. You had to watch World News Now. <laughs> that way I say... How's that? That's, that That's seems good. like it's That's coming back. I, I think you're, you're at a good start. Yeah. But I want, let's, let's, let's move a bit in now into your career. And, uh -huh. you know, uh, I think obviously you're being very modest about it, but you uh, had a very recent uh, appointment. You're now a co-anchor on yeah. uh, America This Morning yeah. on ABC. And yes. this is, I mean, what does this represent for you at this stage in your career? It's, you know... Because I, I've, uh, I don't really think that much of myself, mm -hmm. it, there are so many times that I kind of have to pinch myself and realize, oh, wow, this really is a big deal. Yeah. I was talking to one of my old bosses just about um, uh, two weeks ago mm -hmm. uh, in San Diego, and um, he was trying to give me a sense of like, oh, he's like, look at the numbers. ABC has thousands of employees. Uh, they have dozens of correspondents. Mm -hmm. They only have 12 people who are listed as anchors, who have been considered an anchor of a show. You're one of them. And they only have five people who anchor a daily newscast. Mm -hmm. And you're one of those five. We're not even going to talk about the hours that we do. I anchor two hours of ABC programming. Mm -hmm. There are only four of us that do that. Mm -hmm. um, that in itself is, is breathtaking mm -hmm. of, of an achievement. Yeah. Um, but it's, it's weird for me because it's just like, I, I'm a little boy from, that grew up on the street and, you know, uh, mm -hmm. and grew up in Brooklyn. And to think that that's a big deal, but I guess in essence, it sort of is yeah. a, a big deal. Um, and it's a great career. It's, I've been able to see a lot and mm -hmm. do a lot. Yeah. It doesn't come easy, though. I mean, you put a lot of work in. There's you've a lot of work. You've worked with a number of stations. You've earned your achievements. Yeah. Yeah. 
I, yeah, I, I couldn't keep a job. No. Yeah. <laughs> no, I kept plenty of jobs. But no, it, it takes a lot of work. It takes a lot of persistence. It takes a lot of patience. Mm -hmm. It takes not um, saying, not accepting no for anything. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm always looking ahead at mm -hmm. what, even if there isn't a next move, but what the next thing is. Yeah. You know, um, we used to go to, on vacation. And um, uh, I knew that when I was in Washington, D.C., before I took this ABC job, mm -hmm. that I wanted to set myself up for uh, either a network job or something that would require some international reporting. Mm -hmm. And so going into that, for several years, I'm like, all right, well, we're going to take vacations. We're going to go to Greece, and I'm going to shoot a story in Greece that's going to that's gonna go on my resume reel. Mm -hmm. And I cultivated relationships with different people just to say hi, whatever, not necessarily to be like, hey, do you guys have a job coming? But just so that when Creating I do, your own opportunities. Exactly. Yeah. And even to this day, it's still, you know, constantly looking ahead and saying, all right, I'm going to have a meeting with this person just for the hell of it mm -hmm. um, and to create those own opportunities. But a lot of it is very, very calculated. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't realize that I was doing it on purpose, but it is very yeah. calculated um, <laughs> to try to make those things happen. Did you always know you wanted to be a journalist? No, nah, not at all. Um, I knew that when I was here, um, and um, I performed at uh, there's there's bliss a, at the bliss. Yes. How do you know? Is that the? Because it's the, still only the bliss. <laughs> it's still only the bliss. Yeah. I remember performing there, and um, when we had for my form class, yeah, yeah. Um, that I knew at that time that I wanted that sort of thing, that, okay. that, that performance sort of thing. Okay. I knew that. Um, but I didn't know what it wanted to be. I knew, I started trying to get into acting and then I looked at TV news and I'm like, that's sort of acting. Um, mm -hmm. And it is. Yeah. Um, it's acting as if you're not having a bad day every day. Every it, single day. Every single day. It is a good day. It's fine. Yeah. And really it is. So. Um, and so um, that's, that's the progression of it. And, yeah. and so once I realized that that's what I want to do, I just work on that. Yeah. Now, uh, we're in a particular time across the world yeah. where the role of the media is so very important. Mm -hmm. The reports uh, that we produce, whether in Belize, whether you're in the States, whether you're in another part of the world, can have an impact. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we can only hope it, it's the right type of impact. Yeah. How do you manage the responsibility of it all and being able to ensure that your stories are connecting with people, but also helping people? Well, for us, I mean, listen, we, as an anchor, you have such an amazing and, and, and fantastic role, as I'm sure you know, in the direction of what happens for your show. Mm -hmm. um, one of the minor thrills that I get every day is sending an email and then looking at the rundown and seeing how long it takes before the producers change the rundown. It's a little things. Um, and so, uh, but we, we, you have an important role. So in the last couple of years, in the last year that I've been there at World News Now and America This Morning, we've constantly been discuss discussing, all right, how are we going to approach Trump and how are we going to tackle yeah. the stories of the day? One example was the night of the convention, the Republican convention, when Melania blatantly plagiarized um, Michelle yeah. Obama. It happened around 12 o'clock in the morning that we found out that she had plagiarized. And so we had this newscast that was already planned with everything that took place on day one of the Republican convention. And then I said to my producers, ah, oh, guys, we have to blow everything up yeah. um, and change everything mm -hmm. um, because that's what the story is at yeah. this point. Um, and so that, those are sort of the decisions that are being made. Nowadays, the decisions that we're making on any day is, are we gonna take the low hanging fruit, which is there are a lot of stories that are out there from our president um, that's easy for most newscasts to say, yes, we're gonna lead with that, we're gonna, we're gonna mm -hmm. focus on that. And that's what this person has done in the last year and a half in order to get himself in office mm -hmm. by just saying really ridiculous things, mm -hmm. knowing that any press is good press. Mm -hmm. And so we say, oh my God, can you believe what he said? We're going to lead our newscast and we're going to do analysis with it. Nowadays we're like, what about what happened in North Korea today? What about leading with, uh, 
with uh, this weather story or this other story, not necessarily just taking the low-hanging fruit that the administration puts out and, yeah. and going with it. I'm you not know, sure if that's where you were going I, with I it, but that's what that. we're doing. Yeah. That's what we're doing. And, and it, is, it is a critical role, uh, I think, uh, where you're balancing what is your responsibility uh, to your viewers and, mm -hmm. and as a journalist, but also uh, because readings are important and because yeah. you also want to ensure uh, that you're meeting your own targets. Yeah. So uh, how do you, for, as personally, uh, the role of the media in the yeah. changing dynamics uh, at this point in time, how important is it? Um, because ratings are important to me? No, not ratings. I mean, in, in what you deliver, in the news that we put out, in uh, being able to, to let people see the truth of what's happening in the world or in your own very community. I mean, we try to be honest about it. We, we, we do work at ABC, so it's, we have some very, very strict um, restrictions on what we can say. We can't okay. say that somebody's blatantly lying when yeah. we know they're blatantly lying. Um, but we're also working in a... In a in an era of, of ratings, and just from a Trump standpoint, and like 48% of the American people did not vote for him. Mm -hmm. So we have to kind of, as we go about our day, we have to think, all right, we have to make sure that we're doing news for that audience yeah. as well. On the other hand, we also have to do worry about ratings. So come Tuesday morning, when I'm back on the newscast, I've made sure that we have this guy who's really, really hot, and he's going to be shirtless and cooking right there on set for us for a couple of segments. And it's May and it sweeps. Yes. Hey. So we, we, we're not dummies. That's, that's yeah. 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 We, we may have gotten an idea there. I see my producer right there. <laughs> <laughs> no, and, and let's look at your own personal professional uh, accomplishments. Yeah. Uh, how do you measure them? What, what, um, obviously, the awards are important, but sometimes it's a story that you get to do that becomes so important to you. What are your own personal accomplishments along the way? I mean, there, every day is a struggle. and. Mm -hmm. There, there are many stories that, you know, I say n not to take no for an answer, but, you know, even after you get a network job, mm -hmm. you're constantly struggling to get a story on, on air, and mm -hmm. that becomes this entire campaign. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, while I've been at ABC, there have been some great ones that I've gotten on, on Nightline, our, mm -hmm. our nighttime program that I've done, uh, where they've just kind of rubber stamped every great story that I've mentioned, whether mm -hmm. it's about travel or um, uh, ESPN naked athlete body shoot or it's Nightline mm -hmm. um, or um, some extreme weather photography. But it's a constant, it's a constant battle to try to get these stories that you're passionate yeah. about. Uh, it's been a long career. I've done yeah. many, many things. I've sat down with Beyonce many times. I've yeah. been in the room bar with Barack. Um, I've interviewed the Clintons. Yeah. yeah. You've reported uh, after 9-11. You've been yeah. a part of some of the major historic mm -hmm. moments. So those are the ones yeah, that stand the out US. more? Yeah, no, absolutely, they do. Um, but then there are those moments where, as I've said, um, that I remember in my career where Beyonce performed with her idol, Prince, on the Grammy stage at the Staples Center. And then within 10 minutes of that was sitting like we are right here talking as if we're old friends because we've interviewed many, many times before. And those are one of those moments where you're just kind of like pinching yourself and going, it's real. wow, really? Yeah. Let me work on my Creole right now with you, Beyonce. <laughs> <laughs> see, it. see if you can understand. Um, but yeah. Yeah, uh, it's the little moments in between as well. Yeah, so uh, now looking forward, uh, you've obviously recently taken on the role as co-anchor, uh, and I love that you speak about not really having a definitive plan, but you have to have future aspirations, goals that you're, you're looking forward to. What, what's, what's the next trajectory? Uh, I, don't, I, don't, I, mean, I mean, those are the things I think that had me bouncing from one place to the other mm -hmm. earlier in my career, mm -hmm. by constantly having that next aspiration in mind, which, mm -hmm. and I was able to achieve those aspirations. Um, I so love, now it's settling into the job, is that what you're saying? You know, it's it's, it's kind of actually impossible to settle into my current role because um, it, it, it can be a, a body killer. It's, uh, you know, we, we get in at 10 o'clock at night yeah. and I leave the office around six o'clock in the morning and that's not something that any human can sustain for very, very, very long. Mm -hmm. um, I've been doing it nearly two years. 
I probably could do it another year and a half if ABC allows me to do that. Mm -hmm. uh, but beyond that, that's not one of those Long things time. that you can do forever. Um, but you know, if they allow, I like morning TV, and who knows where the landscape is going with that. Um, okay. Things are changing constantly for us. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah. And uh, let's bring it back home again uh, okay. before we close off. So uh, you're here in Belize. I know you, you wanted to uh, speak to some young people when you yeah, were here I did. as well. I do. What are some of the messages, since you at least have this outlet, uh, that you would like to tell Belizean young people, young boys growing up in the same area, yeah. uh, whether it's West Street or Santa Barbara or yeah. any part of this country? Well, what do that, you want them to know? Well, that's the thing, it, in that... You know, I was there as any one of them. And I think the key, it's not necessarily what you're learning in school or what, or, or, or what you're reading about, um, what your assignments are, but it's all about finding that thing that you're passionate about and then just going like wholeheartedly uh, for that. Yeah. Um, whether it's here in Belize or if you have an opportunity somewhere else to do it. Yeah. There are so many opportunities all over the world for people from anywhere to be able to take advantage of. Not necessarily just in the States, but just go after it passionately and not to take no for an answer and just create it as a, like a campaign in, in whether you're running for Miss Belize or something else, um, you create this campaign of just like, all right, this is what I want. This is what will help me get to that role. Mm -hmm. I need to have this on my resume. I need to look this sort of way, whether I need to lose weight, I need to do whatever. Mm -hmm. You just create what is needed yeah. and, and go after it and, and, set everything up set everything up uh, in line mm -hmm. and and that's just find a goal and uh and go after it so what drives you then ah i wish it was money because i'd be making a whole lot of more money right now uh i guess i, I you know i enjoy i enjoy what i do um it's not the fame which there is a little bit of that mm -hmm. um and that's fun uh but i think it's just Doing TV and making people happy, and you know, being able to hear it from people that, oh wow, you know, you, you make me laugh, and, and that. And whether it's laughing at me because I'm funny looking <laughs> is fine. Yeah. I'm okay with that. Um, mm -hmm. But you know, that's, I, I guess that's what it is. And what about your history with Belize? Do you think has helped to mold you into who you are now? Ah, God, that's a tough question. Yeah. What is? What about my history with Belize? Yeah. Ten years. That's, that's a very Ooh. important part of your life. Yeah, ten. It is an important part of my life, it's, and those are like key integral parts of your of Develop. your life in yeah. in growing up. Um, I'll tell you, I spent many years to try to to get rid of my Creole, <laughs> um, but you know, it, it's weird because as an adult, and when you get older, you realize, oh, that's actually kind of cute, and it's special. And yeah. when I did speak Creole on, on TV, I got so many people on Twitter who were like, that was hot. Like, ah. oh. um, but no, beyond you that, be. <laughs> <laughs> no, beyond that, I mean, there was, a, there was definitely a sense of, of structure. There was a sense of, um, you know, where, you, where the parenting is a little bit different than, mm -hmm. than you would get in the States. Um, and I don't know if that's lost on today's Belizean young people, but um, that definitely, I think, helped that discipline early on help me to kind of craft like what I wanted to do and what I wanted to go after. Okay. All right. And uh, with that, I'll say thank you. And I'll leave you to uh, enjoy the rest of oh, your vacation. No. We have uh, mom in studio as well. And There's we no say thanks to mom. She's part of the, the live studio audience. Yeah, there are no <laughs> conch fritters or like... I heard you love conch, conch fritters. <laughs> I <laughs> That's got what I want. that story. Or meat, or meat patty. Meat pies. Mm, yeah. Meat pies. Like Sorry. Meat, pie, <laughs> meat patty in Jamaica. That's right. But thank you, Candice. We hope thank you enjoy you. your time back home. We appreciate you stopping in thank and just talking me. a bit about your own personal journey. It was a great talk. Okay. Okay, Appreciate great. It. And you'll close off with your Creole and you'll say... Um, thanks for watching. Open the uh, open, open your, your eyes. Open, <laughs> open your eyes. I'm, I'm going con to concentrate too much for uh, what to say. Was that better? <laughs> you are getting there. I, I have, I have there. hope for you. All right. <laughs> but uh, with that, we're going to close off this segment and we'll be back in a few. Stay tuned.